when I built this here lodge, I put all the uh, holes in, and I put tobacco inside and, uh, in respect of Mother Earth because she's wounding Mother Earth. So I usually sit here, so I'll be able to maintain the, uh, the lodge, or I'll sit on that end. And before we go in, I'll smudge the inside, I'll smudge the outside, I'll, uh, I'll smudge our medicines and our waters. And our lodge faces, the door faces the eastern door we use, because everything starts from the east. If the sun didn't come up, there'd be no life, there'd be none. Mm -hmm. So that's why we have our door where the sun comes up. So we're doing this documentary for young people. Do you think it's important for youth to get involved in splitting? The youth should get involved in it because I just learned a lot of stuff that I've never known before, like from my culture, my heritage. It has a big impact on my life because it it's a big impact on our culture. Mm -hmm. My culture has a big impact on my life because I'm really proud of who I am. I think everyone needs to experience one, especially if they're a part of our culture. I give it a try. You never know. I gotta show you how I build the uh, fire, actually, you know. Usually when I get there, they're just putting the rocks in, but I know for a fact that um, when Roger goes and gets ready for the thing, he builds a big like fire pit and while he's building, um, putting wood on, he's also packing the, the rocks inside of it. You make a, like a wigwam, a teepee type fire instead of your firewood. Heat him up about 40 minutes, 45 minutes. Let's the wood all burn away, then he gets a little pitchfork thing and puts it inside the hole in the little sweat lodge. And of course the uh, sacred fire is uh, where we uh, prepare the medicines and the grandfathers and we offer the tobacco. And we have a, a line, a tobacco line, from there to the doorway, and that represents the umbilical cord. And the lodge represents uh, the womb of Mother Earth. When you come in the lodge, you'll be brushed down with an eagle fan, and of course, you'll be smudged. When you go in, you kiss Mother Earth. You don't have to actually kiss Mother Earth. And we enter with respect, and we go clockwise. Clockwise is like the way the sun sets, it's clockwise. When you enter the sweat, you have to say, or all my relations. How do you bring in the grandfathers? We, we use forks. Mm -hmm. So we'll, I'll have somebody inside, and I'll just hand them the uh, grandfather. He'll put them in the pit. And then um, when the rocks come in, usually you offer sage on each, each rock to thank them because these rocks are giving up their, their lives because it's believed in our culture that even the rocks have a spirit. Then once we get in, we're sitting around and everybody's ready and we close the door. Sometimes we'll have some guy outside as a doorman or inside doorman. It's really dark and to me I find it very relaxing and comfortable. It's just really dark. Then I'll start pouring water on, on the rock and it gets extremely hot, extremely hot. And, uh, but uh, that's why we go sweat, you know. When I was in there and when the sweat was dripping, I felt like all the bad and negative was just coming out of my body. We all sweat. It's part of your body, but you're part water. All she can see is the, um, the grandmothers and the grandfathers, which are the rocks, all lit up. How did the rocks become the grandfathers? All I know is that they're millions and millions of years old and they have untold stories. It's supposed to be the oldest we got person in the world. They know everything, they see everything. They know, uh, you know, like everything that goes on in this world, because they're the oldest, you know, so that's why we call them grandfather. The sweats that I've been into all had four rounds. The first round, we'll sing the Mi'kmaq song, uh, honor song four times, then we'll open the door. And how do you go from one round to the next? They take a break, like you can stay in the lodge if the, the lodge, like the person that like is taking care of the lodge is in there with you. Mm -hmm. You could stay in there with them. Some people, you could stay in there, you could just go in there alone, people are different. Or you could go out and just get some air, like fresh air and stuff, stand near the fire. And then you can just go back in, and then they'll start it up again. Second round's all prayer round. Every that takes turn praying. When we're doing the prayer rounds, we open we open it up with a song, and then 
We all go off in order from the first person at the door, which is Roger. Then we would circulate all around until the last person. And we would all take turns praying. This is the longest round usually because like there's so many of us, and we all pray for different types of things. Everyone gets a turn to talk. You could talk in your like in your mind and then just tell them, I'm sitting Ogama when you're done. Or you could speak out loud. But I find it more meaningful when people speak out loud because you hear what they need to say and you get to know them better. We hope that nobody breaks their prayer circle. You know, if somebody says, no, I want to go out, I want to go uh, He's being selfish, huh? Yeah. You know, because then we tell him, you're coming here for your family, you know. And we don't want to break that, so he's going to weaken that prayer on We're all going to feel the heat, but you're not in there alone. And, uh, you know, we encourage each other. I suggest we encourage each other before we go in there. And if somebody wants to go out, hey, you know, talk to them. Use your medicine. Use your verbal medicine. And then the fourth round would be the closing. The last round is, it's, it's open. You can talk, you know, sing. There's always a song that's related to what we're, what we're praying for in the round. But if somebody's got a problem in there, they'll talk about it and we'll try to support that person, you know. Mm -hmm. And so that's four rounds, it's over, so we go out and that's it. Did you learn anything from going to the sweat? I've learned a lot of things that um, I did not know from people who are having troubles with certain addictions, struggles, poverty, illnesses. I didn't know that until they were praying and my eyes got opened a little bit. A lot of guys that come have problems, you know, yeah. and they'll talk about them, you know, try to support them in that way. After sweating with people, they feel like you're brothers and sisters and you just have a deeper connection. I experienced a lot of hardships like everybody else. But I, uh, I talked with my elder about them and uh, when I went in that sweat, alcohol <clears throat> was a big part of my life and the drug scene, you know. But when I got into this road, you know, this, this is magic for me. You know, when you're inside the sweat, you got no more problems. Mm -hmm. There's no problems and, you know, uh, once you come out and, uh, like I said, camaraderie. We get to know people better, like around your communities and stuff. And that's a really big, like it, it really means a lot, you know? Hearing other people's stories and getting to know people, hearing what the elders have to say, learning from them. And if you need to let things out, you let it out in there and it really helps you and it gains you, like it gives you strength. And when I come out, I feel really good. Like I feel like really like more spiritual and stuff. And it's not just a deeper connection with other people. I feel like I have a deeper connection with myself after, after the sweat because it brings a lot of thoughts to the surface of your mind that you don't normally think about all the time. You're thinking so deep about what you really, what you're concerned about, what you want to pray for. It's good for your soul and your spirit. So if someone new is going into a sweat, what advice would you give them? If they're nervous or scared, just pray hard. And, and if you're praying hard enough, you should be fine. What would you wear to one? Mm, you have to wear like a skirt and like you have to cover yourself. Like girls have to cover their bodies. Do you know what boys or men would wear? <laughs> they just wear shorts. Yeah, the men can wear uh, shorts. But the women, we suggest they cover up a little bit more. Before you go into the sweat, you always have to make sure you have at least a towel or two. So one that can wrap around your waist and one to go over your head or shoulders. So if the heat gets too much, you just hide yourself inside the blanket, not the, the towel. Women have to sit a certain way. They have to keep their knees bent on the side. They don't sit with their legs wide open. They can't go in on their moon time. It's believed in our culture that's when a woman is most powerful. The men will get weaker because the women are so powerful. I've been in sweats where we end it doing a pipe ceremony. And I've been in sweats where we start it doing a pipe ceremony. Sometimes we, we offer food. So they have rules differently in that kind of way. Still the same idea in each sweat, but just different different ways of, of like, just saying what you're gonna pray about. 
I felt addicted right after my first one. I was like, I definitely want to do this again. I think it should be held on to for as long as Mi'kmaq people shall live. Don't hesitate to try a sweat because they're real, they're real, you get a really good feeling from them and it's really awesome. And I think everyone should try it. The youth should get involved in it because usually when people say when they go to the sweat lodges that um, it takes the poison out of their body and just makes them feel better and like help them like try to find a new start. I really love them. I enjoy them. And they are a big part of my culture, so like I want to continue doing it. I hope to pass it on to generation to generation, tell stories about them so they never die out. <laughs> Ajdim, Anki Dedis, Dan Delta Dabuasto, Gohoi, Deladigig Deal, Suadim Basik, Axioas.